recording. Oh, ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen. Emo the Warrior here. Back with Austin Yards, back with another video. And I got myself some snacks from Arby's because I know I'm going to probably be getting mad because we're doing a little bit of a... As uh, Vince Russo said, we're gonna we're gonna flip the script, bro. Uh, and uh, uh, don't, so, don't. if you saw before, we did we read uh, when I read Austin the top fifty um, women's uh, WWE's top fifty women of all time list. Well, now WWE has come out with a top fifty tag teams of all time list, and this time we're gonna flip the script. Austin is gonna read the. <laughs> Tag teams for me to me and and fucking Arby's charged me fifty nine cents for some cheese for my fries and guess what they didn't put it in the bag so that's great but yeah so go ahead Austin read the fucking the list I know uh to preface this, I know who the top five are because everybody's been posting the top five so well number fifty the Bushwhackers. <laughs> what I'm confused about is what did they ever do that was so legendary that people consider them a legendary tag team? What did they do? I've never watched what? anything do with the Bushwhackers. One of them was in the the Royal Rumble for a solid two seconds. And to think those motherfuckers were like DLC in one of the wrestling games. <laughs> People have to pay for them. <laughs> the only thing I know them for is their stupid ass walk. <laughs> Already you... tragic with number 50. <laughs> number 49, too cool. Uh, I mean, alright. I mean, I, wouldn't, I don't think they'd be in the top 50, but they were a decent team. I number like number forty eight, the Quebec Quebecers. Who the fuck is that? <laughs> um, that I thought was... you were gonna say the Quebecers for a second. <laughs> no, that's actually I'm. If I'm not mistaken, that is the team where with the Mountie in it, and they had a feud with Man on a Mission or Men on a Mission. Okay. Move on. <laughs> 47, The Smoking Guns. Who the fuck was that? Uh, Billy Gunn and Bart Gunn. <laughs> New Age Outlaws were better. <laughs> Number 46, I don't even fucking know, so don't ask me. Strike Force. It sounds Strike like Force. it sounds like a fucking Power Rangers series. <laughs> There's a series called Strike Force, I think, in Power Rangers. <laughs> okay. Almost sounds like fucking WWE Flex Force. <laughs> I also don't know this one, number forty five, the Head Shrinkers. I've heard the name, don't know the team. Me neither. Shouldn't number... be on this list though. Actually, um, wait a minute. Oh. Let me look up the head shrinkers because I might, I might know them. Hold on. Okay. Oh, so one of the head shrinkers was Umaga. Oh, okay, okay. I I don't know who the other guy is though. Okay. Uh, number 44, Kane and X-Pac. Why? I don't know. Kane and Hurricane was a better tag team. Kane and Big Show was a better tag team. Fuck's sake, the Brothers of Destruction. Uh, I do know that Kane and the Big Show and then the Kane and the Hurricane are not on this list, so... <laughs> <laughs> What what's so special about X Pac? 
he spent one night in China. I, ah, that was bad. That was fucking bad. <laughs> I'm just let you marinate in that one. That was a bad joke. I'm sorry. Number 43, Evolution. The group? Yeah. That's not a tag team. <laughs> well, Evolution That's is a, a mystery. That's a faction. <laughs> evolution is a mystery. No, Evolution is a faction. <laughs> it's not a tag team. Well, you're gonna be I mad knew, about. I guarantee. Be... I guarantee the shield is on this list. I guarantee it. They are. <laughs> mm-hmm. They're not a tag team. You're They're gonna a be, faction. You're not gonna be happy with some other ones on this list too. So, <laughs> if that's the case. Great. <laughs> Number forty-two, Eminem. Oh yeah, Mer uh, Mercury Nitro Melina. Yep. They were a good team. Yeah. They were, like, I liked the, their look that they had. Like, I liked their feud with the Hardys. And, like, I always put on... My neighbors are outside shooting fireworks when 4th of July is two days away. Great. <laughs> Wonderful. My I didn't life. even hear it, so... I sound like somebody shot my fucking window. <laughs> Anyway, continue. Okay. Before I die. Number 41, the Nasty Boys. Fuck them. <laughs> Number 40, Rated RKO. I want to ask why. Why are they both... Why are people allowed to be on this list twice? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Randy Orton is on there with Evolution. And Raid RKO, and Edge is on there with Edge and Christian and Raid RKO. Yeah. Why? <laughs> I don't know. They weren't even a team that long. What? <laughs> How are they one of the greatest teams? They're number f number forty. <laughs> it's okay because they're better than Evolution, apparently. <laughs> and I mean, at least they're not a faction. <laughs> True. They're not a group. <sighs> Number 39, London and Kendrick. Brian Kendrick and Paul London. I think they're a very underrated tag team. I like them, yeah. Paul London, though, is doing whatever the fuck he's doing, and Brian Kendrick's uh, the only the only man left on 205 Live. So. The sole survivor. <laughs> I definitely don't agree with this one. Number 38, DIY. I mean, they're a good team. It's just, I don't think they're one of the greatest teams of all time. Yeah. Like, they put on really good tag team matches. It's just they're not one of the greatest of all time. No. A tag team that I think deserves to be on this list. Probably much higher, though. Number 37, the world's greatest tag team, Shelton Benjamin and Charlie Haas. Yes, those guys were really fucking good, and they were severely underrated as yeah. both Team Angle and World's Greatest Tag Team. Yeah. Well, apparently, I don't know how this team is better than the World's Greatest Tag Team, but number 36, Money, Inc. of IRS and Ted DiBiase. So you're telling me somebody that paid to win a match Ted DiBiase is better than Charlie Haasman and Shelton Benjamin who actually fucking wrestled. Yep. Apparently so. Just fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> Number 35. Jericho. Now who's the fat one? I don't know. <laughs> to be honest. But you know I did see which makes me fucking hate Chris Jericho even more. Because guess what? He's having Lana on his podcast. Oh, wonderful. Great. <laughs> and he says it's going to be the be the greatest podcast of all time. Fuck you, Chris Jericho. Like Tony <laughs> said, go kill yourself. <laughs> oh, oh, my playing. God. Oh, I was playing. Number but 34. Number 34, The Natural Disasters. Earthquake and Typhoon. <laughs> 
I mean, I don't really watch any of their matches, so, I mean, do you think they deserve to be on there? Not really. It was Earthquake and Typhoon. You realize Earthquake was in the fucking, uh... The Oddities? This guy with the Cartman doll? <laughs> That's what he did after the Natural Disasters. Oh. Um... Number 33... Okay, fireworks. <laughs> that one I heard. Number 33, some, a, a tag team that definitely doesn't deserve to be on this fucking list. The Street Profits. Why? <laughs> they suck. <laughs> They're not entertaining at all. They're awful. <laughs> They're number 33. They fought ninjas in a parking lot with the Viking Raiders. How are they on this list? Is it because God is good? Is that why? <laughs> God. <laughs> number number thirty two, the Briscoe brothers, but it's not it's not the Briscoe brothers you're thinking because it's the one with Jerry Briscoe in it. Mm -mm. Well, so, I haven't really watched much of the Briscoes, so Yeah. Number thirty one, Harper and Rowan. I mean, that's another one where it's like, they were, they were a great tag team, but were they really one of the best of all time? They had like one tag team championship run. Yeah. I mean, I love Luke Harper because of like all the shit he did and you know, how he's a good, he's a really good person and shit. And I love his wrestling style. I didn't love how he went to AEW, but I still love his wrestling style. But, like, I don't think his team with Rowan was the best thing ever. Like, I liked it at the time, but I, I didn't think he was the mm -hmm. best. I mean, I liked it when it was just Harper and Rowan and fucking... I liked it when the Wyatt family was actually something when they first debuted. And I liked it when they were the Bludgeon Brothers. But I know, that, I... I know... Harper and Rowan won like the NXT tag titles and then they as the Bludgeon Brothers they won the uh, Smackdown tag team titles so well, at least they didn't hold the Penny Championships yeah true they held the they held the quarter ones uh, number 30 Owen Hart and the British Bulldog I mean <sighs> I mean, I don't really think they deserve to be on this list because I feel like they're more deserving on their own rather than as a tag team. Motherfucker. <laughs> Every fucking time I record a video, people always gotta make noise. Whether it's the fucking retards out on their fucking dirt bikes and four-wheelers all day, or whether it's my neighbors with the seven children, or now people shooting fucking fireworks from 4th of July is in two days. You can't wait a weekend. Hey, at least it's not as bad as, like, that, fr uh, I think it was last Sunday when I worked. Like, it, it was, like, legit. I closed, and it was legit, like... Uh, fucking, they were doing, like, fireworks a week before, so. I don't understand, people. Anyway, continue. Uh, number 29, Miz and Morrison. I mean, they're good as a team, but, once again, that's John Morrison on there twice. Yeah. Um... One of the best of all time, no. I mean, just look at their recent Monday Night Raw run. That speak uh, one of the best tag teams of all time. Do you know? No. Honestly, they went from being tag team champions at the start of 2020 to being jokes <laughs> at the start of 2021. So. Well, oh, don't forget the Miz was WWE champion this year. Yeah, true. For a week. 
Wasting the money in the bank, might I add. Number 28, The Bar. An odd team to put on here. Oh, there's some more odd teams, trust me. There's some more. I mean, I would say, in terms of WWE teams, they're one of the better teams of the recent years, I'd say. But not greatest of all time, though. All right, well, number 27, Team Hell No. Another Kane team. I suppose, well, I feel like they're on here more so for their comedy segments, more so than their actual tag team wrestling matches. Yeah. That's what I feel. Well, do you want to know who's better than Team Hell No? Apparently. Hmm. Number 26, Nikolai Volkov and the Iron Sheik. I mean... I mean, I love the Iron Sheik, but... <laughs> I never watched a Nikolai Volkov match, so... <laughs> uh, number 25, the Los Guerreros. They deserve to be on there. Even though Eddie is a legend himself, they were a really good tag team. Like, you watch... Go back and watch Team Angle versus Los Guerreros. Beautiful wrestling matches. Number 24, the APA. All right. I mean, yeah, they're they're in terms of WWE teams, yeah. I mean, everything they did in the Attitude Era. Even though I think Bradshaw was way better as JBL, but I think they deserve to be on there. Number 23, the Blackjacks. Who the fuck is that? I know JBL's in it, so that's another team that JBL's in. Well, they should automatically be disqualified then. <laughs> Number 22, the Shield. Don't even get me fucking started on the Shield. <laughs> I can't stand the Shield. Oh my god. They're not a tag team. They're a faction. I wish <laughs> freaking stupid ass people would get that straight. A tag team is two people. A tag team is two people. Not three. Okay. Not four like Evolution. Not six like DX, which I'm sure is going to be on here. <laughs> Not fucking 72 like the NWO. <laughs> well, uh, if you want to just go on to it, speaking of DX... Oh, no, I got, I got, I got something to say about the Shield. Because I'm sick and tired. I am sick and tired of all these fucking Shield fucking marks. I see them all the time on Instagram saying, Oh, I wish... I wish John Moxley would come back to WWE so we could get a Shield reunion. Oh, I wish... The shield was still a thing. Oh, I wish we could see a shield reunion again. Why? They broke up and got back together like 15 times. 15 times. Literally. Literally. They had them get back together to go against The Miz and fucking... <laughs> Curtis Axel and fucking Bo Dallas in a fucking blue plaid shirt. Like, <laughs> why? And, and, and then they broke up, got back together... Broke up, got back together, then Dean turned on Seth, and oh my god, Roman got cancer, and oh my god, the shield broke up, and then, oh, they, then, then they broke up, and then, and then, oh, then all of a sudden, Roman's back, oh, I want to get the boys back together, oh, they're back together, next week they split up again, oh, I want the boys together one last time, fuck off, fuck the shield, one of the, in my opinion, in, in my opinion, one of the worst tag teams of all time. Fuck the Shield. Fuck well, them. I like. No, you're you're gonna let me finish talking. Okay, I, okay. I like the 2013, 2014 Shield. Okay. Fuck the Shield from 2017 to 2020. Garbage. All three of them. Garbage. I thought it was the 2019. Whenever the fuck they got back together, they got back together so many goddamn times that I can't even fucking tell. 
And they, um, they literally built the company around those three fucking guys the past fucking, like, what, seven years now. Like, I mean, they still kind of are. <laughs> and and, and the, thing, the thing is, the thing is, they, they, uh, excuse me, they interviewed Roman Reigns and asked him about another S.H.I.E.L.D. run, and Roman said, Roman said he doesn't want the S.H.I.E.L.D. back together ever again. He said the people don't need another S.H.I.E.L.D. run. So you know what, Roman Reigns actually has some fucking sense in his head. <laughs> These stupid fucking fans. Just, I, why? There's a reason John Moxley left WWE, you fucking idiots. Why? Every fucking, whether it's Wrestling News Now, Wrestling World CC, all these fucking Instagram fucking accounts I see. Oh, I want John Moxley to go back to WWE. He was fucking miserable there. That's why he left. I don't, I don't see how he sees AEW as much better. I can't agree with that. But there's a reason he left. Why do you think he would ever go back? You people are the dumbest, like, I, like I've said before, and like I've heard before, wrestling fans are some of the dumbest fucking people walking this planet. The amount of dick sucking I see for the Shield is fucking sickening. They are nowhere close to one of the greatest tag teams. I'm fucking, oh, they're one of the greatest tag teams of the modern era. No, they're not. <laughs> they did way more singles than they ever did as a tag team. Oh, they held the, the tag team championship and the Raw tag team championship. Yeah. That doesn't fucking matter. <laughs> Seth Rollins has won multiple world titles. Roman Reigns has held multiple world titles. He's still a world champion. Dean Ambrose held one title because he fucking sucks. And all of them separated from each other did way more than they did when they were together. So get the fuck out of here talking about, oh, Shield's one of the greatest tag teams of all time. Get the fuck out of here. I'm so tired of people wanting Shield reunions. I don't... Nobody wants to see the Shield anymore. If there's one it's thing done. I can... If there's one thing I can compliment Dean Ambrose's uh, title reign for, it's him giving the title to AJ Styles. That's... That's legit. The only good thing about his title reign. The only Dean Ambrose match I ever liked was him versus AJ Styles at TLC. That's the yeah. only Dean Ambrose match I ever liked. Fucking, I don't understand why so many fucking people want the Shield back together. Why? John Moxley's doing whatever the bumblefuck he's doing in AEW, shoving thumbtacks in his fucking well, corny is. I don't he, know what he's he doing. Had, he and, had his thumbtack child, remember? Mm-hmm. And, and fucking and Seth Rollins is getting married, and he had and he had his fucking goddamn fucking I don't even know Monday Night Messiah child. I don't know. He had his fucking embrace the vision child, and fucking. <laughs> And he and he's stuck fucking in a rivalry with fucking Cesaro and teaming with Bailey of all people and fucking getting his pants ripped off on TV by Cesaro and fucking Roman Reigns is Universal Champion on the best run that he's had as champion. And fucking the best run he's had in general, honestly. Yeah, but people that's what I understand about wrestling fans. This is a little bit of a tangent. How people. Like turned on the fiend so quickly just because the fiend was gone for months, and then it's WWE's fault for not booking good television to keep people intrigued about the fiend. And then by the time the fiend came back, they're like, "Oh, I'm so tired of the fiend. Fuck the fiend. He's garbage. He's a dead character." And then they do the same thing for Roman Reigns. Roman Reigns starts his title uh, run, and then literally by the Royal Rumble, people are already saying, "Oh, I'm tired of Roman Reigns. He needs to lose the title already." And now they're saying, oh, Roman Reigns needs to lose the title. He's not a good champion. Oh, his his run sucks. Oh, 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 Roman's not a good heel. Oh, Roman, it's a dead character. Oh, this, oh, that. And it's like, what the fuck? Like, you get, pe you get people that have good runs like Roman Reigns with the title, where they're actually trying to build up shit, even though it's their fault for booking bad television. But with Roman Reigns' title run, it's been a great title run. Everything to do with Roman Reigns has been great. And they've been building Roman Reigns up as this unstoppable champion, which he is. 
and people want to turn on that. People want to turn on that. And this is where I'm going to get fucking mad because people want to turn on that. They want to have the audacity to say Roman Reigns needs to drop the title and he's been champion for too long and he sucks and this heel character sucks and this and that and that they're tired of the character. They have the audacity to sit there for that. But those are the same motherfuckers that sit on Twitter and say hashtag Eva Marie deserves better. <laughs> Go fucking jump off a bridge, you pieces of shit. Oh, Fuck all of you that sit there God. and shit on Roman Reigns' great title run, and but then you support fucking Eva Marie and fucking Dewdrop and fucking <laughs> you support and you fucking masturbate to fucking Monday Night Raw. Fuck you. <laughs> how how dare you have the audacity? What kind of a wrestling fan are you? To sit there and say, "Fucking Roman Roman Reigns title reign," something that they've actually built up and made interesting and made enjoyable and gave you a reason to watch. Because without Roman Reigns, a lot of people wouldn't watch SmackDown, and that's a fact. Nobody can fucking disprove that. Why do people watch SmackDown? Because Roman Reigns, Roman Reigns, and Paul Heyman and the Usos are what's keeping SmackDown intriguing on a week by week basis. And if you don't think that, then you are fucking blind. I mean, it is I obvious. Why do you, why do you think Roman see, Reigns is on so many segments I don't of the show? see Otis and Chad Gable, like, pulling in viewers. No. <laughs> fucking, the only thing Otis pulls is his own fucking gravitational pull. <laughs> but, My fucking God. but fucking, like, people shit on that. Something that they're actually building up and making interesting to watch on a week-to-week -week basis. But then... Then they're sitting there crying on Twitter. Oh my God, Eva Marie lost. How could you? Eva Marie deserves better. Oh my God, she looks so good. Oh my God, give her. She deserves a title shot. Oh my God, Eva Marie is so hot and so beautiful. Oh, she deserves a title shot. Mm, she's gotten so much better. Oh, mm, stop fat shaming, Dewdrop. Oh, fuck off pissing me off man like fuck those people fuck those wrestling fans fuck Eva Marie fuck Dewdrop and fuck the shield as a tag team that's all I gotta say remember 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 Triple H and Kurt Angle were both in the shield so did they count on that list I don't know <laughs> Do they count? Jesus Christ. <laughs> and he said that. Fuck the shield. They shouldn't be anywhere near this list. Garbage. Complete garbage. If you disagree with me, that's your opinion. But just know that you're wrong. Alright, well. Next. Number 21. D Generation X. <laughs> Which D-Generation X? It doesn't specify. <laughs> if it's Shawn Michaels and Triple H, that's fine. If it's Billy Gunn or Road Dog, that's fine. But if you're talking Triple H, Shawn Michaels, Billy Gunn, Road Dog, X-Pac, and China, fuck no. <laughs> that's a faction. <laughs> you're not going to like number 20 either. <laughs> oh, great. Number 20, The Undisputed Era. <laughs> They're a faction. If it would have said Kyle O'Reilly and Bobby Fish, I would have been fine with it. it but just they're says a faction! <laughs> it just says Roof. Undisputed Era. <laughs> I Count it. One, two, three, four. That's not a tag team, you fucking idiots. God. <laughs> All right. <laughs> if it said Undisputed Era, Kyle O'Reilly, and Bobby Fish, that would be fine. But not Undisputed Era in general, because then that means all four members. <laughs> it is Undisputed, Undisputed Era in general. <laughs> That's what it's on. Yeah. <laughs> like with Evolution, if it would have said Randy Orton and Batista, or R or Ric Flair and Batista, whichever one's held the tag team titles, like that would have been like, okay, well, at least it's a tag team. But not Evolution in general. Like, well, you might have to look this one up because I don't know who this is. Number nineteen, the Soul Patrol. What the fuck <laughs> is the Soul Patrol? I don't know. 
Hold on, let me look at this. WWE The Soul Patrol. <laughs> it's Rocky Johnson and Tony Atlas. Okay. I mean, I haven't watched any of their matches, so I can't speak on this one. I just always just called them Rocky Johnson and fucking Tony Atlas. So I, I didn't know they had a name. I didn't either. Soul Patrol. Uh, number 18. Mr. Fuji and Toru Tanaka. Wasn't Mr. Fuji a manager? It says here he's a wrestler. Mr. Fuji. He was also a manager, though. He was a manager in the Yokozuna. Uh, I can't really speak on this one, so I don't know. Number 17. Get your Steiner math ready. The Steiner Brothers. I mean, that one's fine, I guess. They're a good tag team. Number 16, The Rock and Sock Connection. I get why, because of how popular they were in the Attitude Era, but they were never really a tag team. It was just... I mean, they were, but it's not like they were like a tag team like Edge and Christian or anything like that. Like, they are more... It was more so like a... a friend thing more so than like oh we're a tag team because The Rock was still doing his own thing even when they yeah. were doing the Rock and Sock connection so I mean like I guess I, I, I understand why it's there even though I don't think in terms of that being an actual tag team they're one of the best but number 15 the Wild Samoans uh, that's uh, Roman Reigns uncles isn't it yeah, it's off and Sika yeah that one's fine Number 14, The Rockers. It was Shawn Michaels and Marty Jannetty? Yeah. I mean, okay. I know they were popular. I never really watched any of their matches, but... Well, their tag team matches, but... Well, number, lucky number 13. Uh. The Mega Powers. Isn't that Hulk Hogan and Randy Savage? Yep. I mean, they weren't really a... I mean, I didn't watch a whole lot of that old stuff, but I remember seeing, like, they fought at WrestleMania over Miss Elizabeth, and it said, the Mega Powers implode, or something like that. Yeah, it like, were they? It all sucked. Oh, well. Well, you can speak on that one, then, because I really don't know about it. Their rivalries included the Natural Disasters and Money Inc., Oh. And then Great. and then their their whole rivalry against each other was basically Macho Man accidentally knocked over Miss Elizabeth, so Hulk Hogan took Miss Elizabeth to the back to get her help, and then Macho Man thought, Oh wait, Miss Elizabeth's unconscious and Hulk Hogan's taking her, it must be a kidnapping because he was high on the fucking slim gyms he was eating <laughs> and and basically accused Hulk Hogan of trying to steal his girl and the Megan po Powers and fucking uploaded. Mm -hmm. Alright, well, I, they shouldn't be on here then. Number 12, the Valiant Brothers. Who the fuck is that? I know Jimmy Valiant is part of that. I can't really speak on that one because I don't know. Number 11, Demolition. Never watched a single demolition match. Are they were they any good as a team? God, they were, eh. <laughs> they were kinda eh. I mean, I like the Legion of Doom better. I know one of them turned into fucking Barry Darso in fucking WCW. He was a golfer in WCW because of Vince Russo. So Uh number ten, the British Bulldogs. Wasn't that uh, Davy Boy Smith and uh, the British what's Bulldog? The... Yeah, Davy Boy Smith and who else? And fuck, I don't know. Shit. Wasn't it ah, fuck Dynamite Kid? I think that's what it Dynamite was. Dynamite Kid, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I don't really know. I mean, I remember watching a couple of their matches with, with uh when they went against the Hart Foundation which was Bret Hart and Jim Neidhart and they were pretty good matches yeah 
Number oh, nine. Is, is that what they were called? Yeah, yeah. Number nine, the Brothers of Destruction. Alright. I mean, yeah. I can see why they're up there. Number Probably eight. The best team Taker's been in. Yeah. For sure. I mean, what other team has he been in besides, like, him and Mankind? Until he was in a team with Big Show, don't you remember? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, number eight. Oh, you didn't know? Uh, the, the New Age, Age Outlaws. Outlaws. Yeah. Okay. So, they're putting... Let me get this straight. They're putting... Road Dog and Billy Gunn over Triple H and Shawn Michaels. Is this what I'm led to believe? Yes. Why? <laughs> because of VKM. I don't even know what the fuck you just said. I'm just gonna pretend like I didn't hear it. <laughs> it. It was it was fucking the New Age Outlaws TNA gimmick. They were called the Voodoo Kin Mafia. Oh, uh, VKM, <laughs> Vincent Keeley McMahon. <laughs> <laughs> and do you want to hear their Did song? Vince Russo have something to do with that? Yeah, yeah. Give me a second. Let me. That's you want to hear? You want to hear their song? I just heard the name and it just it it, it screams Vince Russo. <laughs> give me. Let me. YouTube's loading. Give me a second. I'll, I'll play the song. Voodoo Kin Mafia. <laughs> oh my fucking god. <laughs> give me a second. I'm, well, I'm gonna assume they weren't in TNA that long. No, they weren't. Okay, let me see if my sound's up. Yep. Okay. Well, this is an ad. <laughs> my fucking neighbors will stop with the goddamn fireworks. It's pissing me off. Alright, oh this, is, this is the Voodoo Kin Mafia's theme. It's loading up. 911 operator, what's your emergency? <laughs> That sounds so fucking generic. <laughs> oh man. Uh, the thing is, uh, this is a big. This theme is a big new legacy ink meme now, because oh. all the comments are just like, all I could hear is Johnny from New Legacy Ink saying, <laughs> saying, "Help me, there, mouse." Oh my god. Oh, let me go back to the fucking theme. They're not the fucking theme, but the fucking things. But yeah, <laughs> that was that was the <sighs> TNA gimmick. They basically what they did is they called out. Um, I think Road Dog <laughs> called out Triple H and Shawn Michaels, and he was like, "You can meet me at the Alamo." <laughs> Oh my god! <laughs> and they dress. I think one time they dressed up as Triple H and Shawn Michaels. Keep in mind, this is at the time that DX was on TV in 2006. So <laughs> Jesus Christ! Uh, number Why would seven. They ever let Vince Russo touch anything. I don't know. <laughs> but number seven, the Usos. A lot of fucking people <clears throat> were bitching and moaning that the Usos were not in the top five. But, I mean, they're in the top ten, so I don't understand why people are so pissed. I don't understand but, either. <clears throat> but, I mean, they're definitely probably the best team of the modern era in terms of a, a tag team. Like, I mean, that's why brothers work so well as tag teams. Like... <clears throat> Like, brothers and, like, best friends work the greatest as tag teams. Um, the only brothers that don't that don't work well is the fucking young fucks. They yep. can go fuck off. No, they, they, they are never going to be anywhere near any top tag team of all time list. But they better not yeah. be, because they're not. No, they better not. <laughs> don't get me started. Uh, number six, the Legion of Doom, a.k.a. the Road Warriors. Yeah, yeah, they're one of the best. Yeah, I'd put them in there. Number five, the Dudley Boys. Yeah, I mean, I know the rest of these now. I know, but I figure we should we should just like mention them. Yeah. Number four, Edge and Christian. 
I honestly thought like Edge and Christian was going to be number two or number one. Honestly, I I thought, but because of how much WWE like dick sucks Edge and Christian, I do yeah. like Edge and Christian as a team. But like I, just the amount of times they've mentioned Edge and Christian's tag team and all that, and I just figured they'd be at least number two. But yeah. I was shocked. I knew they were going to be top five though. Number three, the Hart Foundation. Which is Brett and Jim Neidhart. Yep. I assume I assume that they're not talking about Brett, Owen, Brian Pillman, British Bulldog, and Jim Neidhart. I mean, they could be. They could be. They better not be, because that's not a tag team. <laughs> uh, get, tag. get your Mark glasses ready. Put on your, mm-hmm. your fucking helmet. Because we're going on a Hardy Boys ride. I don't fucking know what I'm talking about anymore. Number two, the Hardy Boys. Mm-hmm. Rightfully fucking deserved. Not hey, to be you, confused with people, the Hardy Bros. <laughs> all you fucking people can come at me all you want. I don't give a fuck what you say. I don't give a fuck. Oh, the Shield deserves to be in in top five. Oh, oh, oh. fucking god, goddamn fucking... I don't, I don't fucking know what other teams they would fucking say. Fucking oh oh fuck oh 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 um fucking American Alpha deserves to be up there or or a heavy machinery or the Wyatt family or whatever. Like no, like the Hardys deserve to be in that spot. To like everybody who's in the top ten deserves to be there, and. Like, I'm not going to go too long on this because I already know I'm fucking being a mark, but <laughs> the Hardys deserve to be there because of the fact that they've been so popular for so long. I've never seen another team be that popular for that long and keep that popularity no matter what character they played, no matter if they were... They were always just as popular as singles as they were a tag team. And I, I would argue that they were more popular as a tag team than singles. Um, and you, of course, have the brother dynamic as well. And, like, even though all the stupid fucking shit that they've both done, that pisses me off. But, it's sweet. <laughs> but, fucking... In terms of what they've done for the wrestling business like and it, and it, this goes for the Dudleys and Edge and Christian as well like back then like when they were doing those TLC matches and shit they lit- they literally transcended tag team wrestling like they are the main three teams that took tag team wrestling to that next level and i still feel like since then it really hasn't been raised any higher like like I feel like that was like the high point for tag team wrestling back then. Like and a lot of people call that the golden era of tag team wrestling as well. Even the Hardys themselves said it was the golden era of tag team wrestling and the Dudleys said it as well. But like just those matches and everything they did back then like it transcended tag team wrestling from being just tag team wrestling matches to like doing crazier shit but not like indie deathmatch shit like uh, it's hard it's hard to explain <clears throat> like they because like they 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 took it to where like you're like holy shit like, I want to watch that tag team title match. Like, I want to watch that tag team match at WrestleMania. I want to. I want to watch that tag team ladder match at No Mercy. Or I want to. I want to watch that tag team title match at SummerSlam. Like, those t- three teams made you want to watch tag team wrestling. And even though they did a lot of silly shit and a lot of dumb shit that could have got them killed. I th- I definitely think they deserve to be where they're at on the list for for taking tag team wrestling and taking it to that next level. So that's all I'm gonna say before I fucking start keep well, marking out. 
Number one, The New Day. So this one's controversial. A lot of fucking people are mad that The New Day is number one. A lot of fucking people are pissed because they're saying The New Day doesn't deserve it. They're a faction, this and that, which is true. They are a faction. But the way I see it, the main reason that they're on there is because they're one, they're 11 time tag team champions. I think 11. And two, they're the longest tag team champions ever of all time. So I think that's the reason why they're there. Because I think if they didn't have those accolades, they would not be number one. I don't think. Yeah. Do I think they're the greatest tag team of all time? Absolutely not. I'm not saying that the Hargies are the greatest tag team of all time either. I'm not saying that. I don't know who the greatest tag team of all time is. This is just a list. But this is what who WWE thinks is the great top 50 greatest tag teams. And they must... Be taking a little something while making this list because <laughs> that was rough before the top ten. <laughs> but I I don't mind the new day being in number one. I don't. Oh my fucking god! <laughs> <laughs> I'm about okay. to fucking go on a rant about these fucking fireworks. <laughs> it's okay, calm down. But <laughs> I personally don't mind them being number one. It's whatever. I understand why they're there. They wouldn't be my personal number one. I'm sure they probably wouldn't be yours either. But no, no. it's it is what it is. I, I would say for me, for me, they'd probably be still be in the top five just because of all the accomplishments. But they wouldn't be number one. Yeah. The fucking. I don't know. It's. It, I think the list was eh. I think it was be certainly better than the top 50 women's list. That list was god-awful. Putting fucking Nia Jax on that list at all. Putting Sable as number 12. I know. Trust me. Putting Ronda Rousey up so high. Like, oh, Jesus trust me. Christ. I know. Don't remind me. Fucking, I don't know what their next top 50 list is going to be. We got a top 50 women's list, top 50 tag teams. Are they going to do a top 50 superstars list? Top 50 matches list? I don't fucking know. <clears throat> but I guess we'll see when that comes. But that's the... That's WWE's top 50 tag teams list. So, yay. Something. Um, <laughs> it's something. Yeah. So. Yep. Uh, watch them. I'm, I'm telling you, dude. Watch them do a fucking top 50 factions list. I know that they will. <laughs> and, of course, it is the, the, I'm going to tell you the top five right now. The top ten factions is going to be the New World Order. It's going to be Evolution. It's going to be DX. It's going to be The Shield. And probably, and probably Undisputed Era. That's probably what it's going to be. But yeah. Oh, thank God that's over with. All right. Well, peace. <laughs> thank you guys for watching. See you all next time. Don't know when they're going to do another fucking shitty ass top 50 list, but we'll be here to talk about it. So, yeah. Yep. Uh don't know don't even know what fucking video we're doing next in terms of this wrestling shit. So, I don't know what's coming next. We'll see when we get there. Uh, thank you, fuck you, bye. I'm done talking about this. Good night. <laughs>